BBC News, I'm John Shea. The United Nations is urgently seeking some $3 billion to fund humanitarian operations in Sudan. It's expecting more than a million people to flee the country as fighting rages between the army and rival militia forces. The Assistant High Commissioner for Operations at the UN's humanitarian agency, Rauf Mazou, says it's a desperate situation. Countless people remain trapped and terrified inside Sudan, innocent victims of this indiscriminate fighting. Those who have fled across the country's many borders are shattered, finding themselves in places where access is extremely hard and resources are minimal. Sadly, we need once again to call on countries and individuals with the means to step up for innocent people who have lost everything through no fault of their own. A French court of appeal has upheld a three-year sentence given to the former president, Nicolas Sarkozy, for corruption and influence peddling. It confirmed he would wear an electronic bracelet rather than go to jail for the first year and that the remaining two years were suspended. Hugh Schofield reports. This is one of three legal cases in which the former president, now aged 68, is embroiled. He lost it two years ago and now he's lost it again on appeal. The charge is that in 2013, after he'd left office, Mr Sarkozy and his lawyer promised favours to a senior judge if he would supply them with information regarding investigations into his financial affairs. Mr Sarkozy won't be serving his sentence any time soon. He's launched a new appeal to the High Court. Talks in Washington between President Biden and senior Republicans have made little progress towards securing a deal to raise the government's borrowing limit to avoid a default on US debt. Talks will enter a new phase as both Democrats and Republicans named new top negotiators to work out an agreement. China has issued a $2 million fine to one of the country's best-known comedy companies, accusing it of harming society after a military joke made by one of its comedians, Li Haoxi, went viral. Stephen McDonnell has this report from Beijing. Stand-up comedy has been booming in China, but comedians here must be careful with their material. Last weekend, a performer spoke about two dogs chasing a squirrel, which he said reminded him of the phrase, adopt a good style of work, be able to fight and win battles, an expression China's leader Xi Jinping has used to praise the People's Liberation Army work ethic. After the company which organised the show was fined, it terminated the comedian's contract. Many subjects were already off limits to China's comedians. When performances resumed after the Covid crisis, Jokes about the Shanghai lockdown were prohibited. World news from the BBC. Ukraine's First Lady Olena Zelenska is in Seoul, where she's met President Yun sung yeol She gave a speech asking for the world to give Ukraine weapons, but when meeting the president, she did not make a direct request for arms. South Korea has not supplied weapons so far, citing its policy of not arming countries that are at war. Two human rights organisations have accused the Egyptian authorities of having arbitrarily detained and in some cases tortured women and girls who are related to suspected members of the Islamic State group. Human Rights Watch and the Sinai Foundation for Human Rights say the detentions often appear to have been used to pressure families suspected of links to Egyptian jihadists affiliated to IS. A Nepalese mountain guide, Kami Rita Sherpa, has reached the top of Mount Everest for the 27th time, beating his own record for the most climbs of the world's highest mountain. Anbarasan Etherajan has the details. An expedition organiser said Kami Rita successfully reached the summit while guiding a Vietnamese climber on Wednesday morning. The 53-year-old had held the world record since 2018, but another Nepalese climber on Sunday drew level with him by reaching the top for the 26th time. Kamirita hails from Thame village in the Solukumbu district, which is home to Mount Everest. Sherpas form the backbone of Nepal's lucrative mountaineering industry. They take huge risks to make a living, guiding foreign clients and hauling their food and equipment up Everest and other peaks. Deep-sea mapping specialists have made a full-sized scan of the entire wreck of the Titanic. The 3D view is an exact digital twin of the ship and its debris field nearly 4,000 metres down on the ocean floor. The team hopes it will reveal more about the Titanic and how she sank on her maiden voyage across the Atlantic in 1912, killing more than 1,500 people. BBC News.